So I'm excited to get started. This is one of those trainings, one of those advanced trainings, one of those trainings that freak the newest person out, or at least most people that are brand new. But it's also one of the things, if you were to ask any specific leader on having success, true wealth is building not what you have in the bank, but the success that they really had, it comes through the art of tap rooting. If you were to go to an example, go to any leader that's been in the network marketing industry for 10 years and has made millions of dollars and ask them how many people are still a part of the company that are, are, are active that they knew before they started network marketing. And the vast majority will always say less than five that are active building. And the reason is because for whatever reason, life goes on, they move on, they quit, right? But the point of that is, and I've done this lesson, I actually did this when I was in Europe and I had all these top million dollar earners stand up and most of them didn't know more than one person. Now, of course, there's always the rare exceptions, but so what? If you knew six or seven, that's not that many. And these people have thousands upon thousands upon thousands upon thousands in their organization. So the point is, is they learn the art of tap rooting, which is getting into someone's circle of influence. So leaders launch teams. Distributors sign up other distributors. And the very beginning, we all have to go through this process of trial and error of learning because the beginning, it's just, that's just, we don't know how to do it. We don't have that level of influence as we start. So just the first thing is just knowing this and making you consciously aware. Sometimes it's just a reminder is your goal is to not just sponsor a distributor, but to sponsor an entire circle of influence. The average person knows 2000 plus people. We want to get into their circle of influence, but that is an art and it's going to take time and it's going to take a lot of trial and error. It's going to take a lot of practice. It's going to be something that you're going to go through over and over and over at the beginning. Even as you start to develop the skills, it's going to take time for that credibility to catch up. And once you have the credibility and the skills, you're going to see how fast this can happen. You're going to see how fun it is. I remember still, I've been in the industry for four or five years and I made a transition and I'd been the top recruiter, as many of you know, in a company where there were over a million distributors. I was the number one recruiter. And as I go in and this company had done about 4 billion in sales total, not annual sales, total sales. And this company says to me, Hey, we want you to come. We want you to create a rebrand. We want you to be a consultant. Why don't you be a distributor? So I go create this for this company. And as I do this for this company, I'm like, I'm going to go through my whole list. I'm going to go recruit hundreds and hundreds of people. And then I thought again, remember, remember the art of tap rooting. And so I started out with one person and I did over 200,000 in sales that very first week from one person person. Now, of course, yes, there was time. It was, there was a little bit of a pre-launch as we launched it. But the point is, is five months later, I had only recruited one person. Now I'm not teaching you. I'm not telling you to only recruit one person. Working this business is talking to brand new people, but because they become so good at tap rooting, that person got me in front of someone who got me in front of someone. And then I got in front of their best person and their best person. I didn't have time. I literally had no time. I wasn't in management mode. I had no time to go out and reach out to those hundreds of people. Now, most of you can't do that yet. That's where you want to get. So people misinterpret that and they get in management mode. Or I'm just working with the same person. If that same person isn't putting you in front of a lot of brand new people, you're in management mode. So we're going to go through the art of tap rooting. That's why this is a more advanced training as it would blow the brand new person away. So your goal is, is to get what you can. My mentor taught me you're like a vampire going in and a blood sucking vampire and you're sucking out all the blood. And I thought, oh, that's kind of, I don't really like that analogy. That's a graphic analogy. And at first I felt like when I started in this industry, oh, I'm a taker. I'm just trying to take from them. I'm trying to take, 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 get what I can. And then I had to have this mind shift. And the mind shift that I had was, if I can get out of the newest person everything I possibly can, meaning all of their best contacts, isn't that the best way to help them? Yeah, of course it's helping me, 
but their odds of sticking with it are much higher if I can help get them in front of 10 people and say eight people sign up rather than nobody. So I had to learn that, look, yeah, it's going to help me. There's nothing wrong with helping me, but this is the best way to help the newest person. I've got to learn how to get as much as I possibly can as quickly as I can. You've got to mirror them. Maybe that person you can only get them to get you in front of one person. Maybe you can get them to get you in front of five people. Maybe you can get them to get you in front of 10 people. Maybe once you get in front of 10 people, you don't stop there because they did 10. You push and push and push until they push back. You get as much as you possibly can out of the brand new person. Why? Because that's the best way to help them. That's the best way to help you. That's the best way to help everyone. So mirror them. Mirror them. Get as much as you can. If I try to push them, hey, get me in front of your five best contacts. Who are the most successful people you know? And they're pushing back and they can't get me in front of anyone. Then I'm going to narrow it down to, okay, let's just start out with one. Who's the person? Who's the best person you know that you would feel comfortable with? Let's get them in front of me right now. Urgency is synonymous with wealth. I may be skipping ahead, but when I'm going to flow, I'm going to go into things. Too many people wait. And I'll give an analogy later on that. But too many people wait. You Once they sign up, stop making the plan for the plan of the plan, the training for the training of the training. This is when they're the hottest. This is when they're the most excited. They're not going to be more excited three days from now after they studied the comp plan and the products. The odds are less likely they're going to take action if you don't get them to take action right now. So unless it's an inappropriate time, get them to reach out to new people the very second they sign up. Yes, I said the very second. Now, if it isn't an inappropriate time, well, great. Get them to send some messages, some texts, because people are asleep and say, hey, what's your schedule like tomorrow? We need to chat. Yes. Now, whatever system your company's using, if it's audio or text or whatever, but get them to reach out to people right away because you never know. As Jim Rohn says, the birds could have gotten to them. That could be the family and friends that say, I can't believe you're doing this. It could have been their minds naturally negative. So you want to become a master at taprooting? I know it can be scary, but stop being the manager of, hey, I'm here for you. I'll give you an analogy later on this. You've got to get them into action right away. Get them going if you want to become a master at tap rooting and getting into their circle of influence. So I simplify everything. Remember the two questions everybody asks themselves, can I do what you're doing and is it worth it? I simplify everything of, oh yeah, it's real simple. All you're going to do is just share your story. That's it. And we have a whole training, right, in Tegon Nation on how someone can properly tell their story. It's a really simple training. It's less than 10 minutes. And you teach them how to tell their story. That's duplicatable. You can go through those couple steps and teach them how to, to how to tell their story and empower them, right? Give them the vision. Maybe they told you that they're excited because the humanitarian trips this money could provide. Maybe it's taking their family on that trip to Disneyland. Maybe it's just traveling the world. Maybe it's that nice car. Maybe it's getting out of debt. Maybe it's quitting the job, whatever it is. Empower them and remind them why they were excited. Teach them to share their story and say, hey, hey I know you're scared right now, but it's not going to be any less scary a week from now. So I'm going to help you out and let's get you into action right now. And let's contact your very best five people, your best person, your best ten, whatever you can get out of them. Get what you can. Okay. I told you this is going to be a lot more of an intense training. This is not a, a fluff, just watered down training. This is a lot more intense because if you are a six and seven figure earner and you want to go to the next level, you need to do this even better. If you're not a six and seven figure earner and you want to become one, you need to get good at this. So what people will say a lot of times, the objection will be is, I don't want to talk with anyone I know until I make money. Can I just cold call? And this person, 99.99% of the time, never makes it happen. Now, I know people that have because I personally coach people, and you may be one of those people. And that's great. Congrats to you. But most don't. So if you had success this way, please don't spread that disease to others. Again, I told you, tough love, but I'm going to be a lot more intense in this training. Most, that doesn't work. That doesn't happen. If you learn how to tap root, you never, ever have to do that. So once you learn that, the art of tap rooting, it's not to say you won't make new contacts, right? Via social media, you should always be adding to your lead list, add five to 10 new friends on Facebook, on social media. You also are gonna be meeting random people, wherever that is, 
But once you learn the art of tap rooting, you're never going to have to cold call. You're never going to have to make cold contacts. Let me just give you an example. When I started network marketing, there was no social media presence. It was taboo to do anything on social media when you're building your business. This was over a decade ago. So for me, I became the top recruiter out of a million distributors, and that was pure tap rooting, 100% tap rooting. So I think just too many of us get away from this. Again, this is not taking away from making new contacts on social media. You absolutely can and should. This is just teaching the power of tap rooting, getting the art of somebody's circle of influence. So I wrote right here is these people that introduced you provide a shared credibility. So the warm circle of influence, the closing ratio is much higher because there's some sort of personal connection. It's easier to get a hold of them. Of course, there's still people that avoid you, but on average, it's a lot easier to get a hold of them. There's that speed of trust, which makes a huge difference. And so these are warm leads. These are warm leads that can help you to have more success. So we talked a little bit about this, but empower them. That's the very first thing you need to do, right? Our association to pain and pleasure, we make decisions based on that association. The pain may be great, but if the pleasure is greater, they will reach out to new people. So if we want to become a master at taprooting, we need to become better at empowering other people, better at reminding them of their goals and their ambitions and their dreams, reminding them that it is 100% worth it. Then the next thing I do is I, as I'm doing it, yes, I'm teaching them how to share their story, but I'm brainstorming with them the four groups. Now, this, just to really clarify and use your own common sense and principles in this, I'm going to start out with, yes, who are your fab five? And then I'm going to mirror them. And if I can get them to contact more, then I'm going to break it into these groups. If I can't get them to contact more than five, then I'm just going to start out with that. If I can't get them to even contact five, I'm going to go back down to contacting one. Again, this is, this is really advanced and I'm doing my best to explain this because, you know, it's just one of those things that I just learned and I just did. And so I'm breaking all these things down for you. So yes, everything's circumstantial. Everybody's a little bit different. But if they're willing to contact more than five, then this is where what I do is, okay, if you're willing to go all out and you want to blitz this, and you want to make a substantial amount of money, let me show you how. Don't be scared to talk about the money. Don't be scared to take charge. Don't be scared to tell them, hey, here's my business plan. Let me show you. If you're willing, right, you're challenging them. A lot of people we don't even challenge, and they could do so much more if we were just willing to challenge them a little bit more. So I have them break it down to the four different groups of people they know, friends, family, business, and community. And this helps because this is a, a memory jogger for them to start thinking, oh, yeah, I know people. Okay, here are my friends. Here's my family. Here's my business. Here's my community. And I have them break down these four different groups of people. After they've written down as many people as they can in these specific different four groups of people, what I'm going to have them do is mark down on a scale one to ten what those people's skill set is. So, of course, those are people we love to death in regards to their skill set, but we're not talking about how much we love them. We're just talking about their skill set right now. So on a scale 1 to 10, what they think their skill set would be. And now I have them rearrange that list. So let's say I created a list of all my friends and I have 10 friends. Well, I'm going to rank, okay, you know, I've got, you know, Ryan's a 9. I've got um, my other friend you know, Jeff's a seven, I've got Richie, who's a four, I've got, you know, and I go through all of these different people. And I do it. And then as soon as I've got that marked down, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange that list and put the tens at the top, the most influence at the top, all the way down. Why? Because we're talking about tap rooting with influence. And if we're talking about tap rooting with influence, if I get the person that's a 10, let's say that Joe is a 10. If I get Joe, what are the odds that the rest are going to do it? Much higher because these are people that we know together as I'm going in this friends list. And I'm also getting the generals in first. You're building an army. The foot soldiers will follow. You got to get the generals in first, those that have the influence. And so sure, some of them are going to say no, 
But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through that list of the most influential. Who has the most influence? I'm going to start with them. And I'm going to say to Joe, Joe, if you decide to do this, just so you know, I'm talking to so-and-so, 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 and so-and-so, and so-and-so. And they're all going to be on your team. Now, I understand every comp plan is a little bit different on how it's structured. Personally, I like to structure it where I put the people with, that know each other on the same team. Now, if you can take the sponsorship in certain companies. So of course you did the work. You're going to take the sponsorship. Sometimes it's up to you and what your upline is teaching you. But I like to put them in the same team because I don't want circles of influence competing against each other. I want them working together. I want that synergy. So now Joe is thinking, well, if I decide to do this, Rob's talking to so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so. Then, and I may be skipping way ahead, but again, I'm in a flow. Then what I'm going to do is I'm not going to wait on Joe. I'm going to go down to the second person with the most influence. And I'm going to tell that person, let's say it's Sally. I'm going to say, Sally, I've already spoken to Joe. If Joe decides to do this, yes, it will be myself, then Joe, and then you. But then any, if you decide to do this, anyone else that you and I know together, I'm putting them on your team. And I start to list those people. Why? Because now all of a sudden, Sally's starting to think in, wow, if so-and-so joins my team. Sally's starting to think in, wow, we're doing this together as a team and Sally started to think, whoa, this could be big, right? So just understand. And also what's cool is, is let's say Sally says, yes, I can go back to Joe and say, Hey, are you in or are you out? Sally said, yes. Why can I do that ethically? Because I already told Sally, I said, Sally, if you decide to do this, I already spoke to Joe. So it'll be myself then Joe and then you. So now I can create this natural fear of loss. Can you imagine, now this isn't easy, this isn't advanced training, this takes time, but can you imagine if you blitzed this and did this? I signed up my very first month of network marketing doing this, 17 people my last day. My last day. These were packages that were over $1,600. Yes, I know it was 10 years ago, expensive packages. These were skincare packages. Okay, I was a 28 year old guy selling skincare packages and I had 17 people sign up the last day. Why? Because I did this exact strategy. Why? Because I didn't wait. I didn't wait. I didn't wait on Joe. I didn't even wait on Sally. I'd go to the next person, the next person, the next person, the next person. I kept going. And I didn't have to prep them or every single person and say, hey, yeah, I've spoken to a couple, but if you decide to do this, and sometimes I get it. Sometimes. Maybe you run out and you don't have a list of, well, if you decide to do this, so-and-so and so-and-so. At that point, maybe you're talking to someone who doesn't have quite as much influence and to them, just the association of them working with you. At that point, some of those people that you're talking with that maybe on a scale of one to 10 or two or a three, you're letting them know, hey, I'm going to help you. Anyone you and I know together is going to go on your team. And so it's an art and you can create some of your own ideas as you go through this, but it's absolutely important. So Again, simplify this. Fab five, mirror them. It could be a lot more. It could be less. If it's more, I'm going to get them to strategically map out friends, family, business, community, because now we're, we're being strategic on who. We're creating these different lists of people they know together. Uh, yes, you could have two family lists, right? You know, that, that, and again, knowing each other means they know each other well. It's not like, oh, yeah, I've met so-and-so. Similar circles of influence. So when I started this, yes, I had a different family list. I had my family, I had my in-laws, right? And I strategically mapped out who they knew together, who we knew together, and I went through influence on a scale one to 10. Then the airplane analogy, I always give some of you've heard this, but so many, too many of us, when we started network marketing, it's like this. Hey, Martha, I'm here for you. You know, you're glad they signed up. Anything you need, I'm here to help you. That's like getting in the airplane with somebody. They've never flown an airplane before. You're sitting in co-pilot and you say, hey, here are these YouTube videos, go watch them. Here's this training manual, go, go, go study this training manual. If you need anything, let me know. Good luck flying the airplane. That's exactly what we're doing. They're scared out of their minds. And we're telling them, hey, go watch this training. You know what they need? They need you to hold their hand. They need you to do it with them as you start. You've got to learn how to launch leaders and launch teams and launch people and teach your people how to do that. They've got to stop. If they want to do it, that's part of the art of taprooting. 
but they got to hold their hand. They can't just say, hey, I'm here for you. Just go watch this video. Go watch this video. People are scared out of their minds. You got to hold their hand or someone's got to be holding their hand as they start. The personal sponsor should be doing that. If the personal sponsor is not willing to do that, then you need to step in and do that. Now, I understand some of you are huge leaders and you just don't have time. That's okay. You got to pick and choose who and, and teaching your team so that you have leverage to be able to do this. Step two, we drive depth. We ask them to get me connected, right? You ask them to get connected with their Fab Five. Now, I always assure them as I'm getting them launched that I'm not going to annoy their people. I'm not going to hard pitch them, hard close them. Again, I'm empowering them, but I'm also giving them a vision and perspective because a lot of them are just scared to get me on, right, with anybody they know unless they feel like I'm going to treat, treat them with respect and trust. And so that's what I do is I convey that to them. I convey that I'm not going to ever make it awkward for them which we know that many times is their biggest concern. I teach them to tell their story, right? And again, that's in Tigon Nation, just a very simple way. A lot of times I have them intertwine that with my story. I'm big on third-party validations as soon as possible. Um, and so I do that. I understand some of you are big leaders. If you're big leaders, stop telling everybody to do third-party validations with you. They can do third-party validations with their downline. They can do it with their... With, other people, right? It doesn't always have to be with you. Teach them that. I love doing third-party validations to my downline because it showed them I was working. And third-party validation is just another voice. But I like to do third-party validations really, really simple and quickly. Um, and then I use my story, right, to validate the business and the recruiter. And so if I'm the third-party validator, I'm just going to use my story and then I'm going to validate the person that, you know, introduced me. So these are very, very simple tips. Um, I'm going to teach them, right? They're just giving a preview of the movie. That's part of their story. And then what they're going to do is set up a meeting. Now a meeting, again, that's just an appointment. It could be you're adding them to a specific Facebook group. But again, we're talking more business for taprooting, not products. And you need to make sure that as soon as possible, there's some sort of third-party validation and continual exposures to this business. So a meeting could be offline, it could be online. It's really just an additional exposure as we're building this business and we're taprooting. Then my next goal is I wanna find the sprinter. So let's say Joe gets me in front of Sally, who gets me in front of Martha, who gets me in front of Susie. And let's say Susie's that person that's just rocking and rolling, Susie does what I tell her to do. Instead of her just getting me in front of Fab Five, she's like, Rob, I want to make this thing happen. I heard what you said, and I want to go to the next level. I want to go even faster. Great. That's my sprinter. So I'm looking for the sprinter. How do I find the sprinter? Well, again, I'm mirroring people, but I'm asking the right questions. So if I ask someone, hey, what are your goals? Is this something where you feel like you just want to make your money back? You want to make a little bit of money to pay for your products? You want to make a couple hundred dollars a month or you want to make thousands of dollars a month or even more. What are your goals? The right questions are the right answers. Now, when I find that person that says, you know what? I have these huge goals. Great. Now I'm going to push them. Now, not push them in a way that you're their boss. No, lead through info is not through title. But I'm going to push them. I'm going to push them. That's part of your job as a leader. That's what coaches do, is they push their players to be better. Isn't that what parents do? A great parent pushes their kids to be better. Now, again, not you, if there's a balance, as we all know, of pushing. You have to push properly. But I push them. Push them. If they get you in front of 10 people and they do exactly what you said, great. Tell them to get you in front of 10 more. And they do it again, tell them 10 more. Keep going until they push back. And make sure you let them know that it's about them. It's about their goals. And you let them know, hey, you said these are my, your goals. Well, I'm going to help you to achieve your goals. I'm not your boss. I never will be your boss. But I am a leader and I know what I'm doing. I'm going to teach you and show you exactly how to do this. I'm going to teach you how to go to the next level. It's not going to be easy, but I promise you it's going to be worth it. And I know you're busy. We're all busy, but it's worth it. So let's go contact 10 more brand new people. That's what you're doing. That's exactly what you're doing as you go through. So I know this is a lot more intense than some of you are used to, but you want to go to the next level and you want to break through, you want to become that next level leader and maybe you're already doing well, but you want to even go more. 
this will help make you aware of some of the things that I did to become the number one recruiter of a million distributors. These are some of the things that you can do. It takes time. It takes time to be able to get to the point that you have that confidence, that true confidence, that relaxed intensity. It doesn't just happen overnight. You don't just become a great tap brooder overnight. It's going to take a lot of just recruiting, right? And a lot of just inviting and closing. And it's going to take a lot of just building that credibility and that rapport as you go in this business. So here are a couple of the advanced techniques. We already talk, talked a little bit about this. I talked about, you know, this is a little bit of the fear of loss strategy, um, but also, you know, rearranging that list based on influence. And then don't be scared. You know, I don't be scared to say it. Hey, Joe, if you decide to do this, every single person you and I know together is going to go on your team and then you list all those people. Why not? How cool is that? They're thinking, wow, we're doing this as a team. This could be big. Now their brain's starting to think of the possibilities more than the fears. If you can get them to think more of the possibilities and the fears and empower them and help them to see what's possible. So I keep working down that list until I get a yes. And then I work back up the list of the people that I initially talked to. Hey, I told you I was going to make this happen. So, and so just said, or yes, are you in or out? And then I work all the, back up that list. And I'm telling you, some months are good. Some months are bad. But tap rooting is an absolute important skill that you want to learn. And so this is just a personal example. This is what I did. I started out with Cass is a really good friend of mine from Zumba and what we did is we just went after all of the Zumba leaders that she knew and the best Zumba leaders in the nation and then what she did is she went to those Zumba leaders and, and anybody that they knew and their Zumba leaders and their Zumba leaders and she created just a huge massive monstrous team. I've done this with so many different teams. It works but it's not easy. Too many leaders what they do is they just get into management mode and they stop recruiting and they stop with that person so let's say i go down to my fifth generation and sue is a good friend of mine and i'm just comfortable and i ask him two months later who are you working with they say oh i'm still working with sue you have to when you tap root you can train those people a couple people together but you got to keep moving down and down and down and creating depth and some of you are saying yeah robbie you don't understand my comp plan i don't because each one of you have a, has a different one but i do understand that I did this even in my first company with my eighth, ninth, 10th, and 11th generation, and I didn't get paid past my sixth generation. Why? Because successful people know the value of building debt. Number one, it creates a fire for everybody else. Number two, it creates that insurance policy in case those people quit. So I always focused on building that solid volume and that depth. And I personally didn't worry if they were on my if, if I got paid on them or not. Now I understand it can get to the point where it's just so ridiculously below uh, your pay level that it may not make sense. I get that, understand the principle of what I'm teaching, but here's your challenge for each and every single one of you. How can you get the newest person to take as much action as soon as possible? As soon as possible. If they don't do anything in the first 48 hours, they're very unlikely to do anything at all. If they don't do anything the first week, this is once they sign up as doing this as a business. It's different if they're a product user and eventually they become part of the business. But if they don't do anything the first week, they're probably never going to do anything. So you need to get those people into action right away. The second they sign up, get them into action. Don't wait. Urgency is synonymous with wealth. You need to be a true leader. And I know for some of you, this is just common sense. I know for others, this is just scaring you out of your mind. That's okay. It's a process. It will help you out. So for me, I don't like to run longer than a month with a sprinter. I'll run with a sprinter for a month, but that whole month, I'm trying to get someone else to teach them while I'm teaching this sprinter. So let's say I worked with this sprinter for two weeks. And I'm trying to find somebody else so that I can keep moving on and make sure that, 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 that I find the newest person, so that I'm always creating new stories. Now, of course, I'm still there for the other sprinter, but now hopefully that person, the best way I can help them is to help somebody on their team, and also now I can help them where I can get them where they're stepping up to be a leader, because too many times we cripple somebody and we do everything for them. So I challenge them and say, hey, look, I'm here for you, 
but you got my full attention for a month as long as you're matching my energy. And if you've got that kind of energy and you're going all out, then you've got my time for a month. And after a month, then of course I'm still here for you and I'm still always going to teach and train you. But now you're going to do a lot more of that stuff on your own. So now they're naturally, oh yeah, I got to start thinking that way. Now I'm becoming rather than just a leader of followers and becoming a leader of leaders. And I'm also looking for more leaders. It's an art. And there's so many more layers inside of everything I just taught there. But hopefully this is just getting your memory going. Hopefully you can just keep going over this training over and over and over again and getting new ideas and concepts to help take your business to the next level, to create that urgency to go make it happen.